Hey everyone, Doug here with BNH. It's another day in my home office lab place, and that means we have a new piece of gear to play with. Today, we're looking at the Intel NUC 9VX QNX kit. It's one of Intel's latest in the next unit of computing, affectionately called a NUC. NUCs are tiny, bare bones computers that require minimal setup to get going. The CPU really depends on which model you get, but all you really have to do when you buy one is add in your own memory and storage. That's it. Now, I happen to already be a huge fan of these things because the possibilities are endless. You could have a solid media center computer that you hook up to a TV, or a totally fanless low power computer that you use strictly for audio recording. Now, as you can see, I have a slightly older and much smaller model sitting behind me on my desk that I use as a file server. But what we've got here is something closer to a full-fledged computer, including the ability to expand it with things like graphics cards. Now, if you've used or even just seen a NUC before, this one takes a slightly different approach than before. Built around Intel's Xeon Compute module, the entire motherboard and CPU is treated almost like its own card that can actually be swapped out of the case entirely. All you really need to bring to the table is memory and solid state storage. Now, a few things caught my eye when I was first checking out the model. First off, this particular unit uses the high-end Intel Xeon E2286M, which is an 8-core, 16-thread processor. Second, unlike the model I have, this one can fit two M2 NVMe solid-state drives and even use them in a RAID configuration. Third, the expansion slots mean that it can hold both a GPU and a more specialized expansion card as well. So what am I going to do with this thing? Well. Make a small scale video workstation, of course. If you have that urge to build a computer, like I always do, but don't necessarily have all the time in the world, NUCs are a great way to get a quick fix, as setting it up just takes a few minutes. We'll take out the two screws on the back and slide the top panel off, which holds two case fans. The sliding panels can then easily pop off, exposing both top and the bottom of the motherboard. Next, remove the metal bar on the CPU side, thus fully exposing the compute module. And there it is. The compute module, as you can see, is a full CPU, motherboard, heatsink, and fan in one swappable card. It kind of looks like a graphics card. We don't need to take this out at all, but we do have to add a few things. I'll be adding 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. You'll notice I'm using a laptop style so dims, which are required for the small form factor here. For storage, I'm using a Samsung 970 Evo 500 gigabyte NVMe drive, again, providing a much smaller physical size than traditional SATA style drives. I'm going to open up the module by taking out two screws on the bottom, pushing the plastic flap to the side and prying the inner frame of the module outward. Be very gentle here as this part is connected by a thin wire to the board and it should be placed carefully to the side. Now you'll see the exposed RAM slots and adjacent to that, the M2 slots. I'm going to carefully install both the RAM and the M2 SSDs, making sure they're securely in place and then close up the compute module. Lastly, we're going to add a graphics card. Now, we're going with a workstation card here, the NVIDIA Quadro P2200, which is not only ideal for the kind of computer we're building, but also has lower power requirements than a typical GPU, which also means it generates less heat. Now, you can see it's a tight fit, but after carefully angling the card in and pushing the cables aside, it fits perfectly. Now, you look at this and you're probably wondering about heat. There's almost no space between the compute module and the GPU, so it's pretty fair to wonder how the compute module's fan will deal with the airflow. Well, one does have to imagine that the NUC is designed to accommodate such a card. After all, the slot is there. And it is probably designed to run at higher temperatures due to the limited space, so I think we'll be just fine. If you look closely, you'll see that the compute module uses what's commonly called a blower style fan setup. The air is pushed out the backside of the computer as opposed to the space around the card and in the case. Such setups are pretty common in desktops with tightly packed internals. After we're done, I'm going to look at thermals under load, so don't worry just yet. So let's close up the NUC and install an operating system. So I've skipped ahead past the installation process because after all, the beauty of a NUC is that it works almost exactly the same as a desktop computer. All you need to know is that my Windows installation, which you can see here, took under 10 minutes to complete, thanks to the NVMe SSD installing off of a USB flash drive. 
The best tests we can run here are real world examples. Now I do know benchmarks are a thing, but I prefer to use existing projects because if I load up an existing project on this system, they all feature 4K video, basic color effects, sound mixing, and all of the cuts and titling effects that you'd expect on a video. Just from my own use, I found scrubbing through the timelines to be snappy and efficient. Ultimately though, it's the export process that will give us a better idea of performance, thermals, and hardware capabilities. So let's export this timeline using a ProRes 422 HQ preset. This is our standard for mezzanine encoding. I try to export everything this way if possible. Keeping the task manager open and with hardware info loaded, we can see some early results. CPU usage is consistently high through the export and this is exactly what we want. Ideally, you want to have high CPU usage as it is an indicator that every CPU thread is being used. Of course, we need to monitor temperatures while we're at it. Video encoding is one of the easiest ways to really push a CPU into full load. And after a few minutes, you can see that CPU temperatures hover between the mid 70s and mid 80s, occasionally spiking into the high 80s. Now, this isn't amazing, but it is acceptable. In normal use, temperature rarely exceeds the low 70s and the CPU idles at around 45 to 55 Celsius. By the way, this nearly 18 minute video finished in about 21 minutes. Not bad. Hardware encoding has also taken off recently because of availability in Premiere, Resolve, and several other applications that can leverage the dedicated video encoders found in modern CPUs and GPUs. This is relevant here not just because it could cut down the export times, which it didn't in this case, but because it's a core feature of any video workstation. And it's not just video encoders, but also 3D and 2D hardware acceleration, GPU compute functions, and even the number of monitors you can run. Here, I've set up a 25 megabit 4K hardware HEVC export, and the results are very telling. As expected, CPU usage is dramatically lower, usually hovering around 50% usage with occasional dips and spikes. This means the temperatures also see a drop, though not quite as dramatic. Temperatures range from the low 70s to the low 80s, hovering more consistently in the high 70s. As a result, the clock speeds are also able to stay higher for much longer. Now on the GPU side, we can see high utilization up into the 80% range, while GPU temperatures remain at a very, very comfortable 50 to 52C. Overall, I'm very impressed. It's almost like having a high powered laptop without the monitor, but you get the flexibility to customize your memory, storage needs, and add on the additional expansions that you simply could never do with a laptop form factor. For that reason, I could absolutely see this knock in a DIT setup, high-end video streaming production, portable edit workstation, and possibly even a file server. I took a pretty minimal approach here, so I've really only scratched the surface of how you could customize the system, but the possibilities are endless. For video professionals, simply throw in something like a Blackmagic Decklink monitor card, and you could turn this into a portable DIT workstation. Add another SSD for cash, double the RAM, hook up a RAID over Thunderbolt 3, which yes, is on the system, and you could have a very powerful machine that could fit into a backpack. To wrap things up, let's just look at the physical aspects. The NUC has a monolithic, somewhat industrial style to it. I'm a big fan personally. When you open up the case, it's shocking how tightly packed the hardware is, and while it can get a little hot, this didn't seem to impact performance. There are just enough ports to customize the NUC, and the NVMe RAID capability is a nice touch. The biggest surprise here though is the PCIe 16 time slot allowing a GPU to be installed. PCIe power cables are even provided in the case as well for GPUs that need it. Outside, we have a wealth of connections. Four USB 3.1 type A ports, dual gigabit ethernet ports, an HDMI port, two Thunderbolt 3 ports, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. On the front, there's two additional USB ports and a built-in SD card reader. As far as connectivity is concerned, there is not much you're missing here. While this particular NUC unit might be a bit much for some users, the NUC concept itself is amazing. The kit we've looked at here offers a ton of power in such a small package that it's almost hard to believe. If you're looking to build a portable powerhouse for media and content creation, the Intel NUC 9VX QNX kit is something you should seriously consider. I'm Doug with BNH, and I'll see you next time. Oh, here she is, look at this. Are you gonna stop?
You gonna stop meowing during my video? I could hold her during the whole thing, probably.